Welcome to another episode of 9to5Mac Weekly where I thought I'd wear a Google shirt again because apparently when I wore one in the last video, it had quite a few of you enraged. But I'm your host, Miles Somerville, and if you're a fan of good ideas, consider subscribing to the channel for future content like this. WWC just happened, and although it wasn't quite the event most of us were expecting it to be, they did announce some stuff regardless, so I think it'll be worthwhile to talk about. iAmazing is the Swiss Army knife for iOS device management for Mac and Windows. Use it to make Time Machine style wireless backups and easily transfer documents, media, and content. Explore system files, access device and battery diagnostics, and more. And here's what's important. All your data stays local on your computer or the drive of your choice. Backups can be encrypted for maximum privacy. With iAmazing, you can dig into your iPhone or iPad's backup history and browse your photo library without syncing and export multiple versions. You can even save and export WhatsApp chats and iOS messages and it's all ready for Apple's latest software and hardware. It's no wonder why iAmazing is the most popular all-purpose iPhone and iPad manager for Mac and PC. For a limited time, get 30% off iAmazing by clicking the link in the description. Special thanks to iAmazing for sponsoring 9to5Mac. Apple kicked off the event by talking about new features for iOS 15, which will be coming later this fall. And Apple started with talking about new FaceTime updates. And these are probably some of the biggest updates to FaceTime we've gotten in a long time. We firstly got spatial audio support, which will tweak the audio and calls to sound like it's coming from the direction in which the person you're calling is positioned on the screen. There's also a voice isolation mode that'll minimize any loud background noise that you've got going on in the call. And if you want whoever you're calling to hear everything that's going on, you can use the wide spectrum mode which will leave the ambient noise completely unfiltered. There's now portrait mode for FaceTime, which I'm a bit surprised to see, quite honestly, because making that work well consistently and in different lighting scenarios is gonna take some really good edge detection AI, because obviously the blurred look is artificial. You've got a bunch of new sharing features through what Apple's calling SharePlay. This allows you to watch movies, listen to music, or just share your device's screen with whoever you're FaceTiming with. And from what they've showed, this looks like this is gonna work pretty darn well. And coming from someone who's used Hangouts religiously for like six, seven years now, it'll be good to finally put that app to bed and start using FaceTime full time. But I think by far the biggest new feature is FaceTime links. This will allow you to share your FaceTime call via a link that anyone can join. And when I say anyone, I actually mean anyone because FaceTime links will support Android and Windows through a browser. So through this small workaround, Apple has technically brought FaceTime to Android, which is something I would have never expected. iOS 15 is gonna improve on the notification experience a bit as well. The lock screen notifications have been slightly redesigned, and there's now a new notification summary page, which is essentially just a neat collection of some of your most important notifications. But one of the cooler features they showed off was live text, which allows you to copy and paste text that you find within photos, not a PDF or photo document though, but a real life photo. Through AI, the Photos app will recognize text and allow you to interact with it, which is an extremely cool feature. They revealed some more ways the Wallet app will be useful, as you'll be able to add your driver's license or state ID to your Apple Wallet for when you're traveling. That and a handful of other really solid features were announced for iOS 15. Nothing revolutionary per se, but really solid updates, and my personal favorites are all the FaceTime and Apple Wallet features. But moving on to iPadOS, uh, everyone thought there was going to be this revolutionary iPadOS update that would make all the M1 announcements make sense, but it's not the case. Not not at all, really. Uh, in a nutshell, we've got some nice improvements for sure, but as far as I'm concerned, the iPad hasn't gotten much more useful from this update alone. We've now got freeform widget placement for the home screen, in addition to bigger widgets exclusively for the iPad, and that's great, but as I've said many times, that should have been there from jump. We've also now got the app library being carried over from iOS 14, so you can now access all your apps from the dock. There's also a new improved multitask and multi-window features, and they've made it a lot easier to switch between between applications while in the split screen menu. They've even introduced this little menu called Shelf that'll let you more easily view and select your windows. And if you're a big note taker on iPad, then you'll be pleased to hear note taking is now going system wide with quick notes. With either a gesture or a keyboard shortcut, you can now start a note anywhere while in any application. And there's a menu to view all of your quick notes while in the notes app. iPadOS 15 will also take advantage of a lot of the other features coming to iOS 14, like the FaceTime features, but that's pretty much it as far as major features for iPad OS 15 exclusively. So for everyone who's bought an M1 iPad Pro hoping for this massive software overhaul with a pro suite of apps, we can hold this L together. And I've kind of got more to say about this towards the end of the video, but for now I'll say that this update looks solid, but I'm honestly disappointed in how minor this update is 
given the power we've got in the iPad. For my watchOS folks, there are some nice features coming to watchOS 8. You'll be able to add portrait mode photos as your watch face. You can share photos via messages and mail. And there's a bunch of other minor little updates. They've updated the Breathe app with new animations. You can use the digital crown to scroll through text when sending a message, which is a really nice feature. And you've of course got a bunch of new health and fitness features. But we really didn't get anything crazy with watchOS 8. Regardless, I'm looking forward to using all of the features, but like I said, nothing really Really exciting with this update. And then lastly, we got our first look at macOS Monterey. And since Big Sur was such a huge update, I wasn't expecting Monterey to be anything substantial, but a lot of the features they announced are pretty freaking cool. The first of which being universal control. This will allow a singular mouse and keyboard to work seamlessly between a Mac and an iPad. With no setup required, you can have your Mac and iPad next to each other, and your cursor will transition between the machines as you make it so. And this works for more than just their cursor control. You can copy and paste text and even files between machines. The way Apple tries to unify these products for increased productivity is really impressive. And this is another example of that. Mac OS is also getting AirPlay support in Monterey. So you can take a video or music playing on your iPhone and cast it to your Mac like it's a smart TV. And for music specifically, I think this is a really nice addition. Mac OS is also getting shortcuts. So for those of you who use this app frequently on your iPhone or iPad, you'll be good to go to use it on Mac. Probably the biggest visual change to macOS is through the redesigned Safari app. This redesign will carry over into iOS and iPadOS as well, but according to Apple, this update was done for the purpose of making the tabs bar take up less space. So they've now given it this floating tab design with a UI that will correspond its color with the theme of the web page you're on. The big feature they're pushing is tab groups, which will organize your tabs into certain categories. And I'm personally not too sure why they had to change Safari like this. I don't think it was that bad from a design standpoint before, but we'll be getting our hands on the beta soon, so stay tuned for our thoughts on that. And those are some of the biggest features from macOS Monterey, which like I said, isn't a huge update per se, but all of the features they did announce should be pretty cool to use. But now we address the elephant in the room. I'm sure there are many of you who are scratching your heads wondering where the heck are the redesigned MacBook Pros? Where the heck is Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro for the iPads? Where is all of that? as many trade sites reported that today WWDC would be the day for some of that stuff. But unfortunately, the hype train led us somewhere where we didn't think we'd end up. There is a very specific reason why I don't upload a weekly video for every single rumor that drops. And that's because there are really only a few sources that I personally find to be reliable. And so I'll just say that Mark Gurman from Bloomberg, Kang, Ming-Chi Kuo, and for the most part, Love to Dream, those are all sources I find to be pretty reliable for leaks and rumors, generally speaking. Everyone else who's out here confirming stuff, you know, they're, they're kind of like what Love to Dream refers to as actors. And so I'd personally recommend just sticking to the list of gents I normally cover if you want the most reliable leaks and rumors, if that's even a thing. When Apple doesn't deliver on things that are leaked and rumored, a lot of the time uh, consumers like to get angry at Apple for not delivering on these things when these are essentially just rumors that are made up by people a lot of the time. And so I just be very particular and really pay attention to the track record of a lot of these people who you follow and who are claiming to be leakers, because a lot of the time, you know, they can lead you down this path of, uh, falsehood. But back to the hardware itself, if there's no hardware at this event, then where do we go from here? When are we gonna see these MacBooks? Um, well, I'm not a leaker, but I would say that there are two possibilities here. One, Apple could just host another event in the next month or so where they release these new MacBook Pros in addition to probably a few other pieces of hardware. Uh, or two, the MacBook Pros are delayed and released in an event in the fall like they have done so in previous years. If MacBooks are coming this year, I highly doubt they'd wait till the very tail end of the year to announce them unless it was because of a manufacturing delay, perhaps a delay in mini LED production. But either way, we've now got more to look forward to, one, and I get to hold on to my pennies for a little bit longer. We're gonna be doing the standard feature reviews for all these software betas dropping, so if you're ready for that, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Special thanks to iMazing for sponsoring 9to5Mac. iMazing is made by Apple fans and it's already fully compatible with iOS 14, iPadOS 14, and it's ready for macOS, Big Sur, and Apple Silicon. Use it to do things like easily transfer music and videos to your devices or download and install iOS apps and manage an app library right on your desktop. Click the link in the description to get 30% off iMazing for a limited time.